He had a lot of different names, depending on where in the world he was, but there's only one that matters. You killed 008, and I'm 007. Today on the Comic Book Report, James Bond 007, the complete Warren Ellis omnibus from Dynamite Entertainment. Stick around and check it out. Greetings all, my name is Dominic and today you're tuning in to the Comic Book Report where we review comic books and graphic novels so you can get an idea of what to read. And today I'm finally taking a look at the James Bond 007 comics from Dynamite Entertainment. Today I'll be taking a look at the complete Warren Ellis Omnibus. This incredible standard size hardcover edition includes all 12 issues from Ellis's run on the title. Let's get started with today's review. First, some quick facts about today's collection. The issues in this volume were written by Warren Ellis and penciled by Jason Masters. The issues in this volume were published by Dynamite Entertainment beginning in 2015. The volume itself collects James Bond, the 2015 series, issues 1 through 12. And finally, this standard size hardcover comes in at 328 pages. At this time, I'd like to issue a brief spoiler warning. I will be flipping through the contents of today's collection and commenting on plot points throughout. You've been advised. Okay, and here's our first look at that standard size hardcover, and admittedly, this is one of the best made collected editions I've received in some time. This is my first book from Dynamite Entertainment, and I have to say, it is wonderfully made. My only drawback for this collection is that it's not an oversized edition. The front and back cover are gorgeous. I love the detail work on the spine. There is no dust jacket, but it's hardly needed as this hardcover art is stunning. It even comes with a red ribbon bookmark to mark your place throughout your read. I don't have a lot of collections like this, and I love the attention to detail. I'm familiar with some of Ellis' work on Transmetropolitan and Planetary. I believe I reviewed the Planetary Omnibus sometime in the last few years, but this was my first time reading Ellis in some time. And now I'll go ahead and give you a quick look at the binding on this book. No real complaints here. Like I mentioned, this is a very well-made collection, feels very sturdy. Only drawback for me is that it was not oversized, but still a lovely collection and a fantastic way to read these issues. And now we're going to dive into the collection itself. The end pages are red with little 007 logos all throughout it on the front and back of the book. Love to see that detail work. As far as the collection itself, as I mentioned earlier in the video, it collects the two story arcs from Warren Ellis. Those story arcs being Varger and Eidolon. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but they're both six issue little story arcs and they're really wonderful. I will say I am a big fan of the James Bond film franchise, as well as a reader of the Ian Fleming novels. I'm a pretty good, well-versed James Bond fan overall, but I haven't really delved into the world of his comic books. And when I knew that Warren Ellis was a writer for some of the Bond books, I knew I had to check it out at some point. So imagine my joy when my wife gifted this to me on Christmas. At any rate, I read all 12 issues over the course of a few nights, and I have a couple things to say about it. First and foremost, it is a very well-illustrated collection. I think the character models are really nice, the outlines are very sturdy, and it's a very memorable visual style. I feel like the details for the background are just enough without being too overwhelming. The sense of place is there, which I always like seeing, and I think is particularly important in a Bond book. I do want to say, for those that maybe don't like graphic violence or gore in your comic books, this might not be the series for you. I was very surprised to see the level of gore and violence depicted in this comic. Uh, you know, we have people getting their throats slit, their heads like ripped back, and a lot of gunshot wounds, blood, heads exploding, things like that, uh, which was a little bit alarming. I had no idea that we'd see that kind of violence in this book. It doesn't bother me as much, but I wanted to go ahead and put that warning out there for those that maybe don't love a ton of violence in their books. 
As far as the storyline goes, they do feel fairly Bondy. Uh, both of them, I believe, take place largely in Europe. We have some over in America. Uh, so we have a bit of travel throughout the books. I think I would have liked to see more exotic locales, just being a fan of some of the Bond books and movies where they're almost one part travelogue. I do feel that while we have some distinct senses of place and travel locations, they're not as exotic or as lustrous as I would have loved to see from kind of a world like, you know, globe trotting adventure Bond book. At any rate, it was pretty good. You know, there is some sense of weaponry, if not a ton of gadget work, which I do also like to see present in Bond, uh, you know, materials. But it was okay. You know, a lot of the main characters are represented here. We have James Bond, 007. We have M. We have Q. We have Money Penny, And we even have Felix Leiter, which I always enjoy seeing. That's Bond's kind of contemporary from the CIA. So the cast is really all there. As far as the villains throughout, we have a couple kind of interesting ones. We have one guy that can't really feel anything and some woman that has sort of hyper advanced cybernetic sort of prosthetics like arms and legs that make her super strong. We have this kind of femme fatale character. So we do have some familiar Bond territory here, but I don't see a ton of super villains, super villains. There's maybe one character that fits that bill. Overall, very fun story arcs. We have one that deals with sort of uh, drug smuggling that ends up being a much larger plot. And we have another one that has to do with sort of a mole in MI5, the sister organization to MI6 where James Bond works. And they're both really interesting. We have a lot of those kind of espionage, thriller, conspiracy kind of, you know, themes and motifs. And that really works for a Bond, you know, film, book, anything. And it definitely works here. I think the writing is very concise, the dialogue is very witty and fun, and all the character motivations are present, reliable, makes sense, and overall, no complaints whatsoever with the writing or the illustrations. I think where I see a drawback in this collection overall, as far as the content and the actual quality of the issues, is I feel like it's missing something in the sense of scope I often get from Bond movies per se. You know, we have these globetrotting adventures, we have, you know, the kind of love interests, the Bond girls, we have sometimes gadgets, we have a very large conspiracy through line confrontation with villain, and I feel like we get a sense of that here, if not a little truncated, with some elements just missing or maybe not flushed out to the extent I would like. I don't know if that feeling would have been improved by reading this month to month, more serialized rather than in one sitting. Maybe that sense of kind of elongating the process of the storytelling would have made it feel a little bit fuller, but reading all 12 issues over the course of a couple nights, I just felt like the storyline if not rushed, just was over too swiftly. I would almost rather have seen one larger story arc across the 12 issues, rather than two almost independent stories. Overall, what we get here is still really well done. It's just missing something. It's missing that oomph. It's missing that sense of almost detail. Like, I wish it would have gone deeper. I wish we would have seen more subplots or things like that. Instead, we have a very linear through line, it felt to me. Uh, but again, the voices and the characters all feel very authentic. We do have some unique storylines. I don't feel like this was just a retread of that Bond movie or this Bond novel. It felt like a very distinct new adventure that I feel like would be in the world of James Bond. But it almost feels like these are the lesser cases. These are the smaller assignments. In fact, I think in the first story arc, they act Emma actually says this is a very small little assignment you can finish up. And it does blow up into a bigger set of circumstances that have a much more devious villain and plot. But overall, the feeling I had was that this was still a lesser case for James Bond. It does not have the same sense of scope as some of the bigger Bond films or novels from Ian Fleming. Admittedly, that was a very high bar to hit, but I think I was hoping for a little bit more, especially from the hands of Warren Ellis. That being said, this is my first foray into the Bond comic series, and I was not disappointed overall. I think that this was still a satisfactory read, above average, very happy to read it. I was kind of at the edge of my seat. I would characterize this as a page turner as I genuinely wanted to figure out what was behind the issues that came up in the story arcs, 
what was the motivation, how is Bond going to figure it out, how is he going to stop them, and bring justice and safety back to the world. And I did feel like overall it was delivered. I feel like the story arcs both wrapped up nicely with very little complaints. Again, my only issue is just that sense of lack of scope. I wish they would have gone bigger. I wish they would have gone a little deeper. I wish we would have seen more issues per story arc. Uh, And again, other than that, very solid. I also think the art style, I really like it, but I think that they could have filled out the world a bit more. Like I said, the detail work is there for, I think, the bare essentials of the sense of place and the you know positions of the different props or elements and stage dressings or what have you in these panels. But I think that they could have done even more to immerse us in the world. I think with a couple extra detail added works to it, we would have felt an even more clear sense of place. There would have been a little more to look at in each given panel. Instead, I feel like many panels are either scenes of action or violence or the character models themselves, with very little furnishings as far as the details around them. Sometimes even when we're in an exterior place, we'll have you know a couple standard buildings or vehicles or modes of transportation, but we don't have as much as I hoped. And I I think in a James Bond book, as well as in a film, the sense of place is absolutely key to the storytelling. And again, it's not even that the artist did a bad job here. I think that what the artist illustrated is absolutely lush and beautiful. I think the colorist on this did a fantastic job. And certainly the page print quality, the paper stock is a nice, thick, glossy print page. So all the art is reproduced just gorgeously. I just think I would have loved to see even more detail to enrich the storytelling experience even more. I feel without that sense of detail and you know all that richness we could have seen in the sense of place throughout the comic, we're really focused instead on the characters, and maybe that's by design. I'm always caught up with what the characters are doing, what they're saying, and the sense of momentum, action, and most of the time violence in this. That is really the absolute main magnifying glass is on the character actions, not as much the background work. And I think that that is fine, and that really pushed the characterization forward, made me care about each little scene of dialogue. But again, with a book and a franchise that has so much to do with travel and place, I wish I would have seen a little more detail. As far as Warren Ellis's depiction of Bond, I think it's absolutely rock solid. We have a very competent man here who has a very particular set of skills and is good under a pressured environment that we see get to problem solve even when his hands are tied behind his back, both literally and figuratively. And I really love that. I feel like Ellis absolutely understands the character of Bond 007. I love to see him work out exactly how to do the situation best. I like to see his spy craft in motion. I like to see how he handles situations as they present themselves in real time. His fighting competency, his situational awareness, all of that is there and you get to see that play out expertly. I think as well his personality type is a little bit... Um, more stoic in some ways, which I think absolutely work for Bond. We do have a level of that charm and charisma, but it feels almost cheeky with his humor. It does; It's not obnoxious. It's not over the top. It's just a little bit of charm and cheek that I think work, again, very well, feel very true to form, true to character. So it made almost whatever he did feel authentically Bond, and I appreciated that maybe first and foremost in this work. I also think the character of M did a really great job handling Bond. It felt very M. Characters like Moneypenny, even though she was not in the series a ton, save for a few scenes, I feel like she stole the show every panel she was in. She was very vibrant. They gave a lot of character work in the couple of interactions she got to have with James Bond, and they really filled her character with so much personality, and I was really pleasantly surprised to see that. It really reminded me of the Moneypenny we got from the Daniel Craig era James Bond movies, Overall, very solid little cast here. I liked seeing also the governments at work here. There is quite a bit, particularly in the second story arc, that have to do with MI6 and MI5, the different organizations in the British government. And so you get a lot of political power plays and just different things like that happening in addition to all of the action and adventure. And I think it just works. Like I said, that there are a lot of great, really well-rooted Bond-isms, Bond tropes throughout these books story arcs and these 12 issues and overall i think ellis really knew what he was doing when he made these comics but i just would have loved to see them go even further 
At the end of the collection, we have a great cover art gallery and a few extras. Like I said, this is one of the best made collections I've handled in some time. The bookmark ribbon was gorgeous, and I loved marking my place as I made my way through the collection. Overall, could not be happier about how this collection was produced. And at the end of the day, even with a couple minor quibbles, I'm absolutely interested in reading further Bond stories in the Dynamite Entertainment world. And now that we've finished out the collection itself, all that's left to do today is to give James Bond 007, the Warren Ellis Omnibus hardcover, a grade. For distilling the most essential elements of a James Bond work into a comic book medium, showcasing all the action, intrigue, and espionage essential to a compelling James Bond story, the Comic Book Report is happy to give James Bond 007, the complete Warren Ellis Omnibus collection, a B-. This was certainly an above-average comic book read for me. It was definitely a memorable entry in the James Bond mind canon that I have for this character. I enjoyed it, and even though I would have preferred a grander sense of scope for some of the stories inside it, I think that the narrative voice was very clear and the characters were very authentic and true to form. I think that this was an exciting launch to this Dynamite Entertainment series, and one I hope to revisit in the future. That's going to do it for today. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and don't forget to leave a like. Until next time, this has been the Comic Book Report. Thanks for watching.